Whenever someone talks about their introduction into anime, it's very likely they're going to be talking about a shonen battle series. This is a genre that's very well known, not just in the anime community, but in general, for being this usually long-running set of series that go on for years and years and years, sometimes a decade or even more, and they're mostly focused on the action, on the exploits of a seemingly vast array of characters with various different kinds of abilities and personalities playing off one another in service to an ultimate goal and the various means that which they go about it. It's a genre that's reached massive popularity because anyone can like it. If you like dudes punching one another, the chances of you liking the shonen battle manga genre are basically very, very high indeed. And I was a kid who grew up with kind of what's called the big three. Mostly Naruto, that was the one that was most consistently the one I followed. Then it was Bleach, and One Piece was always the kind of odd man out that never really appealed to me. I never really liked the art style as a kid, and I was never a big fan of the pirate motif. So Bleach and Naruto were the things that got most of my attention growing up. But Naruto... Well, it's not really over because they're still milking it up with Boruto's anime and the manga, and Bleach is, well, de facto finished, and the anime concluded several years before the manga did, and One Piece is still not fucking over somehow against at all laws of nature and God, but whenever there's a big void left in an industry, it will be filled with something, and the big kind of void filler for the next generation of anime fans and of the shonen battle genre is My Hero Academia. Capitalizing on the recent mega popularity of superheroes, My Hero Academia is basically a superhero shonen battle series with all the trappings of superheroes and the shonen battle genre. And it's gotten massive success so far, despite the fact that it's only about, I want to say, 140-ish chapters, and it's only been going on for less than five years, it's a rising star in the anime community, and it's also earned the respect of people who don't just watch dudes punching one another with elaborate tricks like Jutsu or Zanpakuto and all that other crap. Um, it's getting its first film, big film release, and as an enthusiast of superhero fiction, despite the fact I keep noticing things wrong with it, I was interested in seeing what My Hero Academia had to offer because I like the idea of superheroes. I like the idea of the shonen battle genre. Um, I have a lot of problems with the genre, some of which are addressed by My Hero Academia and some of which aren't. But as I jumped into it, my first impressions were very, very good indeed because you know how in X-Men comics... We always talk about the possibility of mutants being the new status quo for humanity, where the regular non-powered people are going to be replaced by individuals who are all born with superpowers that give them extraordinary abilities and or altered physiologies. And My Hero Academia is set in a world where everyone is basically a mutant. It's basically that... It's kind of like the dream of Charles Xavier sort of realized where... Mutants and humans, they reach an accord, and then as more and more people's powers start to show up, evolution took its place, and so mutants are the standards quo, except they're not called mutants here, obviously. Uh, they're called people with quirks. And much like X-Men, the people in My Hero Academia are born with special abilities. Some people look like regular dudes and dudettes, and they have the ability to shoot, I don't know, fire out of their hands or lasers. And other people are born with different kinds of abilities that are sort of tied to their physiology. So you have people who look kind of like birds or kind of like frogs. Um, very much similar uh, to New X-Men uh, by Grant Morrison, where he introduced the idea that, that superheroes, or rather that mutants, can be born with different bodies, but not always with the coolest powers. And it is in this world where everyone has these superpowers that we are introduced to Izuku Midoriya, or Deku as he's known uh, as from his rival, because it's a shonen battle manga and because it's fucking Japan, of course he must have a rival of some description. And Deku is born without powers. He is just a regular guy in a world where everyone has abilities. But the problem with poor Deku is that he's a superhero fanboy. He loves superheroes and he wants to be one. 
and he can't do it because he doesn't have superpowers. And because Deku doesn't exist in the DC universe and he's not rich as fuck, he can exactly go about being Batman for his own series. Uh, fortunately for Izuku, in, in amongst the first chapters of the manga, where we're introduced to him, the world, the status quo, and all that kind of stuff, he encounters All Might, who's basically the Superman of this universe, and discovers a little surprise concerning All Might, that he's not really feeling well, and that he's trying to kind of look for a successor to follow him, and Izuku just happens to be that guy. And so Izuku is able to inherit a quirk, and this kickstarts his superhero career. But before he can become a full-fledged superhero, because this is fucking Japan, of course, he must go to high school, because Japan, of course. And in that school, he is, of course, reintroduced with his rival. He meets friends, enemies, frenemies, all that other stuff. He gets embroiled in a big heroes versus villains conspiracy scheme that spans the generations. It's a whole thing, which I shall not spoil any more than I already have, because I honestly think this is a series that can appeal to a lot of people, and it obviously is because there are millions of people all around the world who are loving the crap out of this story, I'm just not one of them. And it's not even a case for me disliking the series overall. I just think that the elements that work aren't, don't work strongly enough for me to overcome the things that keep bothering me. And there are several noteworthy things that do bother me that are keeping me from truly enjoying myself with the series and kind of keeping the series from realizing its full potential. The first and possibly the biggest problem of them all is the pacing. Now, the Shona Battle genre has a big problem usually, and that's that it can get slow as fuck. Um, the reason why they're still on Namek was so popular back during the 90s and the early 2000s when Dragon Ball Z was airing was the fact that they were on Namek for a long amount of time, a very, very long amount of time, and that's just in the anime, where of course all the things were padded out, but even in the manga, it still took a long ass time to get off of Namek, and this is a problem that Shonen Battle series have all the time, where because they're sort of designed to keep going on and on and on, usually past their logical endpoint, they can get severely long in the tooth, and they can become extremely padded out. And it feels like the author of My Hero Academia recognized this problem, and he took steps to subvert it. And for the first, like, I want to say 40 to 50-ish chapters of the manga that I read, it works really well. But the more I got into it, and the more I was consistently reading it chapter after chapter, the pacing started to reach an opposite problem. If One Piece is taking for fucking ever to finish, My Hero Academia feels like a Blitzkrieg in a Call of Duty game on crack. This thing is fast, furious, and relentless. That's a breath of fresh air at the beginning, but as I was reaching the end of the first tournament arc, because there must be a tournament arc, because motherfucking Japan, it got really obnoxious, and it kept being obnoxious, and it kept being like this... It kept being like an annoying friend who keeps poking you over and over and over again, who keeps telling you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, but you know he is, and you're just waiting to rip his freaking head off. It's kind of like that. Um, the pacing is way too much in the other extreme, and if they subverted another uh, shonen battle trope, um, I think the pacing could have worked um, in spite of being so relentless, in, in spite of being so fast, but the author relies on another trope from the genre, and that's the melodrama. Now, I don't know why the shonen battle manga genre does this. I don't know why we have this really forced really over-the-top, melodramatic shit, chapter after chapter after chapter, um, because people say Dragon Ball did that, but Dragon Ball doesn't do that. In fact, Dragon Ball is the series that stopped and laughed at idiots who are like, now I shall avenge you, my friend, blah, and then they just get one-shotted by the villain, and then everyone just stops dead and, and points and laughs at the moron before continuing the story. So I don't know why 
or where the hell this whole idea of we got to make this super early melodramatic shit comes from with regards to this genre, but it's not a problem that's solved by My Hero Academia. And so when you combine this really over-the-top melodrama with relentless pacing, you really do feel like you're reading like some kind of manga version of a Call of Duty campaign where every single moment is the biggest, most important thing ever. And when you have like 20 of those super big important moments happening at such a relentless pace, you just get bored, you get exhausted. You wonder to yourself, how the fuck are the characters not exhausted by this? And that was one of the first big clues, to me at least, that I was probably not going to end up liking this past the first few chapters. And then we get to another problem with the pacing, and that's that there's no breathing room. There's no breathing room for the characters. There's no breathing room for the audience. We just keep going on and on and on, seeing explosion after figurative explosion constantly, and it gets really tiresome. When everything becomes a big deal, nothing feels like a big deal anymore. And so a lot of the moments that are like supposed to be impactful, they just come off as really drab and boring because I'm exhausted and I don't want to deal with this shit. And this is something that I've only ever really felt like with My Hero Academia because I read the entire first part of One Piece from chapter one all the way to the end of the Paramount War and the Marine Ford battle almost binged it all and I never felt this kind of problem because one Piece, while it is considerably slower than My Hero Academia, it has downtime where we get breaks from the big bombast of it all and the big melodrama, and so we can get a chance to charge our batteries and relax. But because My Hero Academia is so afraid of being another dragged out Shonen Battle series, the pacing really, really kills a lot of my enjoyment for this. And there are also several parts in the story where it's really obvious that we should get like some moments of breathing or some smaller character moments, but we can't because the pacing is so relentless. In fact, at the end of the first tournament, Todoroki has a big character arc and he goes to confront another character about it and that character is paramount to his backstory. And not only do we not see what the fuck happens with that conversation, they basically skip over it because the author is so deftly afraid of anything that could be construed as filler, we just lose potentially great, quieter moments between the characters and the cast. And there's another problem here. These are kids. They're not in constant life and death battles, so why the hell does it feel like they're in the middle of World War III where every single of every moment of every day is going to kill them if they don't do everything exactly right? Like, even the premise doesn't feel like it fits with the kind of pacing and the kind of circumstances we keep finding these guys into. And the, second, the pacing also doesn't help the transition between the arcs because there's no downtime. The, the end of like the tournament arc chapter immediately sets up the next arc. And usually that could be a good thing, but because there's no breathing room, we get the climax of one arc and then a couple chapters afterward, we have another super big moment of the next arc. And it gets so relentlessly boring and obnoxious after a particular point in time. So that's a pretty big knock against My Hero Academia. It fixes one problem of the, of the genre, but it doesn't address the other one. And it kind of makes the other one considerably more obnoxious than a lot of the things it's clearly taking inspiration from and trying to address from other series. The next big problem is that despite the interesting setup of this world where being a superhero is so normal, you go to school for it, there's nothing really else interesting to say about the superhero genre. My Hero Academia doesn't offer us anything cool beyond the premise. There's no interesting discussions about law and order or even the played out morality angle. Um, there's just nothing. It's, it's all very kind of borderline surface level superhero fare, which if you've only seen like, like even if you've seen superhero movies, 
I don't know how you can read this and think to yourself, yeah, this is the gr- the next big, great superhero epic because this is like on the level of the first Ant-Man movie. It's like, it's a superhero story because there's dudes in costumes called superheroes, but it's not really doing anything with the concept. It's, it's nothing that Western comics haven't done a billion times better even decades ago, never mind some of the stuff that's being put out now. And you might say, oh, well, that's not fair. Um, maybe the series isn't trying to do that. However, the series does try to do that. The series is constantly like talking about the responsibility of being a hero, uh, what is the role of villains or anti-heroes in society, what makes a true hero, and all of it falls really flat because... It's so borderline surface level shit that anybody with even the vaguest notions of what a superhero is could say. There's nothing interesting here. There's no cool take. It literally is just a kind of a generic battle series with superhero trappings as like its mandatory gimmick so it can differentiate itself from the shonen battle about ninja or or death god samurai or pirates or crazy alien martial artists. So that's another big deal breaker uh, for me at least. And the final one that killed a lot of my interest was the villains. Now, there is one interesting angle that My Hero Academia kind of has going for it, and that's that both the main antagonist and the main protagonist are kind of in training. They both have idols on the respective sides of these two extremes, and they're both trying to grow into those roles. And that's kind of interesting and cool, but I don't give a fuck about any of the antagonists. Like, if you put a gun in my head and told me, name an antagonist from My Hero Academia, who's not Hero Killer Stain, one of the most relentlessly overrated characters of all time, and a prime example of my previous point, I could not fucking do it, because... I do not find the villain storyline compelling at all. I find them all relentlessly generic. Um, they're not superhero uh, cliches necessarily, but they very much are anime cliches. Uh, there's the emo guy. There's the crazy girl who's also kind of a axe, axe murdering psychopath because, of course, she is. And though a few of them have somewhat decent or even interesting abilities and powers, it ultimately is for naught because I'm just not invested in their storyline in the least. So yeah, those are just kind of my thoughts on My Hero Academia. I almost really liked it. I would have liked to have liked it, but it just doesn't work for me. It tries to fix some things without considering other things to... uh, to add to the list. Um, It doesn't really create compelling antagonists. It doesn't really have anything interesting to say or do with the superhero premise besides being what if everyone was an X-Man. And ultimately, that killed a lot of my enjoyment for it. Some people have said that the anime is considerably better, but I don't know. Because when you adapt a manga into an anime, you're usually adapting about three to four chapters per episode. And because the pacing of a manga chapter, a single one already feels relentlessly overblown and too fast for its own good, I dread to actually think what the hell the anime must look like with that kind of a pacing. Um, And yes, I've heard the OST. Uh, Yes, you say, Ron, it is a cool song and all that stuff. But really, I don't really have much interest in watching this. Um, Even if the pacing problem was alleviated, that still doesn't really change the fact that the superhero material is just kind of bland and generic, and that I don't find the antagonists super compelling on like a basic writing level. So even if you got cool people to, to, to spout this boring dialogue, I doubt they can spice it up overly much to a higher degree. Um, And that's not even to say that I dislike this series. I like a lot of things about it, besides the thing I just spent the past 20 minutes talking about. I like Midoriya. Midoriya is a really cool shonen protagonist. He's not just another borderline inbred retard who only likes to fight and eat. 
he's actually a smart dude um, who's also kind of like socially nervous in a really believable way. And seeing his character evolve has been one of the one of the best parts of the manga for me so far. And he and he feels like a legitimate breath of fresh air. I really appreciate the fact that the class in the school feels like an actual class. It's not just here's the five relevant people and here's the background fodder. No, a lot of the class gets their own little subplots and moments during fights and they all have really cool designs. They're all really memorable. They all feel distinct and different from one another, which is really impressive considering the fact that there's like 20 plus people in just one class and then there's multiple classes introduced later on, all of who also feel very much their own characters. And like I said, I like the kind of X-Men premise where X-Men was fully realized and became the norm. I like kind of that stuff, but it's not enough to overcompensate for the pacing, for the bad villains, and the almost Daniel Way levels of writing the superhero material present here. So yeah, those are my thoughts on My Hero Academia. I wanted to like it. I ultimately don't. I don't think it's a bad show by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I think this is probably one of the best examples in my whole life where I just don't like something because it just doesn't click in my head for me over me considering it bad because I think that if I gave this to anybody else, they would have a really, really good time with it, but it just doesn't click in all the right spots with me and that's what keeps me back from truly enjoying it. So yeah, that's kind of my review for My Hero Academia and its first 100 chapters of the manga. What do you guys think about the series? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Do you want to, you know, hang me by the balls for saying this kind of sacrilege and blasphemy or whatever? Please comment down below and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.